Uh, well, welcome to the Coaching to Flourish podcast. I am your host, John Andrew Williams, and today I'm here with Alejandra. Alejandra, welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. And uh, Alejandra is a participant in the wellness training she has. She leads yoga, yoga courses in leadership. And you, you mentioned you had an organization of 80 people that you are using your life coach training with. And yeah, I'd love to start with your background. What do you do? What do you love to do? And yeah, let's start with that. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Um, there were so many reasons really that I joined the wellness coaching program. Uh, but one of my biggest reasons was I wanted to be of greater use to the people that I led. Mm -hmm. And um, I had already been inspired by people like Simon Sinek, you know, with starting with your why and, and really leading in a way that's not this being a boss with your, with your executive team and with the people that you lead, but really inspiring. And um, when I met with some of the people from your organization, I knew right away that this was going to be something that nourished my own spirit, that gave me a sense of self-growth, and that then I could share that with others. And for me, that is uh, my life's work. You know, right, how can right. I have this awesome synergy of self-growth that then I can share with others? So um, my background is yoga. I got into it about 24 years ago. Um, I had just had a baby. I was living in a city where I didn't have a lot of friends. I, it was a new city for me. Um, and I was quite bored and lost. Didn't know what I was going to do with my life and was going to school, but not really, you know, this was, I was like, what, like 21, you know, and not college was just not happening for me. I was like, what am I doing? This is, I don't even know what I'm going to do with this. And, um, and that's how I kind of stumbled upon yoga. And immediately there was just something. I said, I love this. The fact that there was mindfulness and movement and that it started to heal, not just my body, but it healed my spirit. And that's, that's what really opened the door for me to want to teach more and eventually get certified. And, and then everything grew from there. Right, right. You know, it's me. I have a dear friend. She works as a coach in a very large corporation. And she said, what was woo woo once 20 years ago is now becoming mainstream in organizations. What's your experience with that? Oh my goodness. Okay. So you have to know that definitely um, when I got started, especially in a small um, South Texas, very Catholic, right. um, it was a really hard start. Um, <laughs> you know, it was like, I got made fun of, you know, like, do you wear loincloths? Do you lay on the ground and make noises and ohm? And um, it was a rough start. It was a rough start. Um, but there's always, you know, you're, you become a magnet for the right people. And I just trusted in that process. And I always had really good mentors in my life. My dad, my yoga teacher, uh, close friends, my grandmother who had practiced yoga for many, many years. And stay true to yourself, you know, is what the main message was. And so I stayed true to myself and was willing to start small. And I think um, for many people that are starting off in a business or some type of pursuit, embracing that sometimes small really can be better because you can get your head around it and you can um, control that growth. Although at the time you want things to go big really fast, right? It's like, you don't feel successful until it goes big. But in hindsight, I, I think about, you know, the two people, the three people that might have come to my class at the beginning and the fact that I was making a positive change with two to three people and that they kept coming back and then slowly they brought a friend and, and it grew from there. I wouldn't change it now because had I had an explosive growth um, from the beginning, I don't think it would have been as meaningful for me, as it has been today, to have made those really deep connections with those first few customers, you know? I think yeah, you're describing the journey every coach goes through when they get, you know, to you know, really get to those first five clients. It's, it's hard. You have to get to, you know, you have to get through so much, but then once people get a base, I, the surprising thing for me being an entrepreneur, you have to both do all the admin work and then you have to deliver the product. And those are very different skill sets. Absolutely. 
how have you managed both of those skill sets? Well, first of all, being that I only had a few clients, mm -hmm. um, you definitely have the time. <laughs> Thank God. Mm -hmm. And there's a, instead of seeing it as, you know, glass half empty, you think, okay, because I'm, I'm a small little business. Um, I think it teaches you deep appreciation, you know, had again, had the clients come flooding in, had I been hired by some grand institution and it's like, okay, here's your schedule, here are your clients. I don't think I would have fallen in love with what I'm doing as much as having had to work for each relationship, had to learn how it is to truly connect, you know, really connect, like really care because you have to, you have nothing else. So those first two to three clients really are the seed for the future. And um, so, so one, I had time, you know, to really do both ends, um, which I like because now that I have multiple studios and multiple teams, um, I like that I've, that I've done every job. So when I talk to whoever in whatever department, I've been there, I've done it. I know the challenges and I like being able to relate with people. It is, um, I think getting into this field, the one thing that always comes up for me is you got to really love people. And in order to really love people, you got to work on yourself because if you don't love yourself and you're highly judgmental and harsh on yourself, it's going to be really hard to be loving and non-judgmental with others. So I always come back to like when things get rocky in my life, I start with me right? I got to fix me. I got to work on me. I got to get at peace with myself. And as, as that starts to happen, it's funny Then I can jump on a call with anybody, a client, a customer, whoever, and I see myself in them. I can see the struggle or the resistance or where I'm being um, non-coachable, you know, and I, it's easier. So I kind of like, I, I, I like it all. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're speaking from the standpoint of someone who has had to like build up everything from scratch, essentially. But the huge benefit of this, that is that you know exactly how much energy that takes and what it, what's entailed there. Where I w And I always found that my client sessions became these islands of peace, like these little opportunities for me to put all of the other things aside. I imagine yoga, that's even, even more intense as you're leading a class. Where, how have you found coaching influences the way you lead or even approach yoga? That is, it's, it's so parallel. It is about really becoming present. And like you said, John, I love that because mm -hmm. I am, um, I, I can both get very quickly grounded due to practice because I don't think it's my my default. I think my default is to be like a kite, you know, and up in the air. I love ideas. I love creating, but I have made it second nature to learn to get present and grounded through a lot of practice. And so coaching and teaching yoga, same thing. You got to arrive and you got to arrive really present to the people or the person who shows up for you. And it becomes a very profound meditation for us, the guide or the coach, right? It's the same thing. It's you just got to show up, make the space, create the safe environment. And um, so same skill set. What happens when you do that now? When you get grounded now, what, what's coming up or what happens? Yeah. Well, for me getting grounded, like right now I thought, okay, how do I get grounded? I think the first thing is the awareness of looking at myself, bird's eye view. Are you grounded? How does it feel? What does it feel like? You know, so I have to first have the awareness, am I or am I not? And in order for me to do that, there's, there is like a splitting of the two. There is the busy monkey mind, you know, that's like, what am I going to say next? You know, whatever, all the busy, busy, busy. And then there is the part of me that watches the busy, busy, busy. So I go into the observer, the witness of myself. And then I'm like, oh, 
hey, you are pretty grounded. Cool. Right. Or, oh my gosh, you are not grounded. So if I am not, one of the first things I do before I use breathing, because breathing will be my second thing, I need to ensure that my physical posture is grounded. So if I'm in a chair on a coaching session, I ground my feet, I ground my pelvis, and I get my spine tall. When my physical body is grounded, then I go take a breath, you know, and it's as if the breathing ignites the spirit within the structure that I built. But if my structure is like collapsed, it's really hard to bring a collapsed structure to life with breath. So body structure, build it beautifully, build it strong, then add the life to it. And then from there, it just, it just goes. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, what, I think what you're speaking to has really strong parallels to empathetic listening where there's an element of being present to your own listening, but then being like meta conscious of the way you're listening. So you have to almost listen to your listening. If that makes sense. Uh, Absolutely. Well, how, when, you, when, when did you know that coaching was for you? I mean, when did you, like, when, how did you first hear about coaching? And when did you think that's it? That's the, that's the ticket. I think that it was when I watched you on a video. Okay. Um, I was doing research and I watched you coaching somebody else. And anything that is connection with another human, with another, it's not just another human because I have the same relationship with my dogs and my cat, you know? Um, for that matter, I love being in nature. I'll even have that with a flower. There is like, there is just something about slowing down to that moment where you're just like, literally like, boom, connected. There's something so powerful. And when I watched you coach, I thought, oh, it's like watching a connection and wanting to be a part of it. Um, so coaching is, I, I think um, there's so many ways that we can live, you know, and then so many ways that we can be on autopilot, which I really don't call living. And unfortunately, a lot of people will go through life autopiloting, never really being in witness mode, like watching what you're doing, why you're doing it, how you're doing it savoring you know i see people like driving and like they're eating their sandwich or whatever and i'm like food is one of life's great i mean when i drink my tea it's like oh i mean i just i want to go through life like if i'm what's gonna your favorite tea, tea what's your what, what's your um, tea if we're talking tea okay so i like uh the base to be typically like a rooibos like a red tea right. and then i like warm teas like cinnamony like clove cardamom like chais you know i know chai yeah, basically yeah. means tea but you know those warm tones <laughs> yeah. vanilla preferably like i'll add like a little now i do oat milk you know so it's got a little bit of thickness to it mm -hmm. ginger so kind of heat building teas are my favorite but but i love tea but it's like i want to savor what i'm doing mm -hmm. so so to me if um if you don't have that naturally i think that you can teach yourself that you know like Whatever you're going to do, if your job is to clean bathrooms because you're a janitor, or if your job is to lead a major company with lots of employees, why not go ahead and just like do it all out? Why not just fall in love with what you're doing? Even if at first it means I'm building a muscle that I don't have yet, but I want to have it. So I'll fake it till I make it, you know, and then, uh, and then if it never falls, like you, ne you never fall in love with it, well then maybe it's indicative you're in the wrong field or doing the wrong thing, you know? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I could, I could see that. It, you know, it's interesting. The idea of does everyone have a skill set that it takes to be a life coach or does everyone have a natural skill set to be a life coach? Even the idea of like a natural skill set or not a natural skill set is an interesting question. Uh, I think so much of life coaching concepts, why I got into it is because I felt this is the kind of education that I wish everyone could have. I wish I could have had this education when I was in high school, 
and definitely in college, and then definitely as a teacher of young people, uh, this is the kind. These are the kind of skill sets that I think should be ubiquitous. The challenge point that I see is that for people to get into it, they have to break through a lot of cultural ideas of it's more important to be a good speaker than a good listener. It's more important to you know, um, follow the rules and, and you know, be in this lane, you know, where, where you need to go versus, you know, I want to do something completely different. That's scary. You know, it's, it's a scary thing. How have you in your life done that? Taken, let's say what I'm guessing, I'm assuming is like, how did you grow up and what did you take from that? And then how did you evolve and grow beyond it? Well, first I have to tell you something. I, I had this thought when you said that most of us, I would say probably all of us, deeply want to be loved. We want to be liked. And I believe that we think that the way we're going to be loved or liked is because of what we say, what we do. Look at me. I'm so great. Don't you love me? I really want to be loved, right? And the irony is that it's probably the opposite. Like, you're going to be more loved and liked if you just get real authentic, be quiet and actually care about the other person, what they have to say. It's, it's like, it's like do the opposite of what you think it's going to take for someone to like you showing off is uh, going to get you the opposite results. That's so funny. You know, it's like, I think it's the kind of question that sometimes comes up in coach training where coaches will ask, how should I, like, what, what should I look like? You know, like, how should my face look? Like, what sort of nonverbal should I give? The answer is always be empathetic. Just be with the other person, be over there on the other side. And if people do that, then it doesn't matter what you look like or how, you know, your, all of your expression, everything take care of, takes care of itself, which isn't the usual way of interacting. Yeah, because everybody wants to show off. Oh, I've got your answer. Oh, I know how to do that. <laughs> I, I, you know, I love coaching so much. Not only do I offer that to all of my team that I employ, but in a gentle way, I do that in all my friendships, right? I offer coaching without them knowing that, that I'm doing that. Um, but I love it so much that I even now, one of the mentors from the coaching program that I was in is now a coach I hire. And I meet with her at first every week. And now I meet her bi-weekly because she's just gotten me from point A to point B to I'm, I'm on beyond Z. That's how quickly mm -hmm. she has helped me mobilize through so many of my challenges. And, and here's why I love her. She does not try to fill in the blanks. She doesn't cut me off. She holds space in the most authentic way. Um, she's just so real and sh she's just holding space for me to let me talk things through out loud and how about this and what, and, and she'll ask me those powerful questions. And, um, and so for all of us that are wondering, well, how would I be a good coach? You nailed it. It's like, be real, listen deeply. You don't have to worry about what the next question is. Cause if you're really listening deeply and you're not in a rush to think, what do I need to say next? Even being quiet, the person will be quiet with you and then they'll get going again. Yeah, I think I, I love my coach. She's amazing. And She's one of your, I'm sure your elite coaches within your organization. Um, can we give her a shout out? Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to guess, Ooh. but it gets a little <laughs> tricky. <laughs> so her name is Raj Anderson. Yeah, that was my guess. What's up, Raj? I wrote it down on paper before. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I just think she is it. And She's um, amazing, isn't she? Yeah, and it's it's just her ability to hold space. And, and I don't get this feeling like she's listening to me going, What's the next question? I need to ask the right question. No, no, no. She lets me work my stuff out. And then, and then she'll just kind of take a breath. And while she breathes, sometimes another like aha happens. And then I get going again. She's just so skillful in the way she reads me 
because she's all she's doing is deep listening. Right, right. And there's there are elements, I think, when people are starting to get into coaching, they have to, they go through a period of unlearning. What, what did you find you had to unlearn to get deeper into coaching? Without a doubt, wanting to save everybody, wanting to give them the answers, wanting to mentor them. Oh, I know what to do. I got it. I got it. This is what you need to do. Get out a piece of paper because that was my old leadership way. Um, I handed everybody fish and I didn't teach people to go fishing. So as a businesswoman, I work half the hours now, <laughs> maybe even a quarter of the hours because coaching gave me the skill set to really teach them to go fishing. Ask them, well, what do you think would be the best solution? Really? How do you think that works? I mean, I don't have to have, I don't even have to have my list of questions. It really is a what, how, what, how, really stay curious. And how, how would you do that? Wow. That sounds really interesting. How else do you think that might work beyond the issue we're talking about? I mean, my questions are pretty much like three to four and I'm, and then they're talking. And the best part is that then this team member goes on to just upgrade and upgrade and upgrade. And before I know it, they barely need me. Right. It's amazing. It reminds me of, there was a participant, this is years ago. She was uh, in the Air Force based in Colorado. And she was an officer. So other people would come to her and get orders. And she was co coached in coach training. And uh, she made it, a comment once about how word got out that she approached giving orders from a coaching perspective, which I mean, when she was describing, you know, I, I've never been in the military, when she was describing how it all worked. Uh, it was remarkable to know that even this approach could work in an organization that is not built for it. But to right. realize she said her popularity in people trying to get appointments with her went through the roof because it, they, people understood that it was a different kind of conversation. And the reports that she got back from it is, is similar to what you're describing because people, they realize, wow, this is not just, it's their empathy, like the empowerment of people doesn't mean that you're less powerful or you're giving away power. You're just, it's not a, it's not a zero sum game. And I feel like that's what, is so much, uh, it's hard to wrap our minds around it when we're not conditioned that way, you know? I think that is a huge deconditioning though. So back to that, that point, what did I have to unlearn? Right. It, is, it is a daily practice for me. I still have that kind of savior, educator, mentor mentality a lot. And um, I do have to work on that constantly. It's so ingrained after 20 something years, um, even with my children, because especially with your children, you don't wanna see them hurt. You don't wanna see them struggle. So you wanna give them the answer right away. And um, so I would say that that is a really beautiful awareness for myself to practice on on a daily is you don't have all the answers and you certainly don't have the answers that they might need that will really work for them. You don't know their background. You don't know all their backstory and all the details. And the best part also is that so many times they will blow me away with their solution. I'm like, I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. What, uh, just out of curiosity, because I've been doing a lot of research um, in future self and future self uh, concepts. What would your future self say right here, right now, if she were to walk into the room? She would be so proud of me because I'm really embracing life in the moment. Like I love all my challenges from the past. I know I'll have challenges in the future, but I don't see them as like, oh, challenges. It's like challenges are upgrades, their opportunity to realign, rethink, re-strategize. And um, I'm, I'm really, I know she would be happy 
to see me so so in the moment and embracing it all as part of this journey called life. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. What, uh, what advice would you give to someone just starting out in their coach training? Be willing to like really get raw. Like um, I almost at, in my training felt like, wow, maybe I should just like stop being like me, 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 you know, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. uh, every time that you'd get a chance to practice being either the coach or the client, like get in as much as you can, because what you put into it is what you're going to get back. And, um, and then connect with the people in your group. We have our WhatsApp. We still connect. I'm still really close to a lot of the people that were in my program. Um, it is one of the most important things that I ever did in my life. I, I, I'm very grateful for having done it. And I look forward to whatever is next for me in this coaching journey. Like, I know you've got other programs, so um, I'm starting to think, okay, what, what's the next one? Do it for yourself, knowing that, that from that planting of that seed will come so many opportunities beyond what you think. So for example, I don't professionally coach in the sense of clients for coaching, yet I use it in my teaching of yoga and my leadership and my parenting and my relationships personal and work it's um it's it's quite profound right i feel like it is the missing piece in the education world once you get it 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 really it changes everything everything changes uh we do we we're putting together a couple new new uh, they're like shiny toys i get to play with oh good we're revamping a little bit of the 2.0. We have some redoing a little bit of the executive. Uh, we have a leadership and uh, we have an inclusivity and diversity course coming in January. Neuroscience course we're rolling out, uh, looking at doing a personal training course. Like there's, there's a lot happening that wow. feels like this work is, is truly, truly making a difference. Uh, this, this world and all these challenges. Uh, how, if people wanted to know more about your story, what's the best way they can contact you? What's the, if they want uh, Dasa, to. Casa Yoga is my yoga studio community. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go to casayoga.com, um, we're in South Texas. And then I'm also the South Texas territory owner for Orange Theory Fitness. So I have <laughs> multiple studios. Um, but yeah, and I'm on, uh, I'm on Instagram as my yoga life 360. And I love that word 360 because everything is connected. How you do one thing, right? I love uh, that saying, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So uh, mindfulness and everything we do, 360, all the way around. Well, Alejandra, it's been a pleasure to get to know you in this and to do this. Uh, thank you. Thank you for what thank you're you. doing. And I mean, it just... It's, it's wild to have a vision like decades ago and to see it come to fruition and not just, you know, and, and then not just have it be this idea, but have it be real, you know, it's a, it's a real thing. Uh, what, what would you, what would you like to say to complete uh, this, this cast? I know that a lot of us are out there in the world trying to figure things out which way to go. And, and many times what will stop us are the obstacles and the challenges. And we think, oh, if we could really start embracing these challenges, these obstacles and recognize that they are truly hitting the pause to reassess, you will start look, looking forward to these challenges as like, aha, uh -huh. so there is an opportunity here. I don't see it yet. But every challenge that I've had has brought me to the success that I have today. It's just looking for the treasure in those challenges, even health crises. You know, being in the wellness industry, I see people who get, you know, really serious illnesses or physical ailments. And if we could only realize that, wow, 
It is because of this illness that someone changes their diet and starts to exercise or they lose their job and they think this is the end of the world and they re and then they get a better job like a few months later, you know? Um, yeah, so I hope that we can all, you know, like all the ancient teachings said, embrace your antagonist, mm -hmm. you know, embrace those challenges and look for the treasure. Be willing to hit the pause, stop, re-strategize. Yeah, and most of all, have faith. I'm, I'm somebody who, you know, when COVID happened and things got really dark for a moment and all my businesses were shut down and revenue stopped, but not the bills, I still had bills to pay and suddenly zero revenue across the board. Um, in hindsight, I look back and I think I got down on my knees and I cried, not once, but multiple times. And it was those dark, dark moments that led me to dig deep into my spirit. It brought me back to my own spiritual anchors and my faith grew so strong. Um, and now here we go. We're off and going again and things are picking up and business is good again. Um, faith, trust, trust that everything has a purpose. You got to look for those purposes though. They, many times they're not handed to us on a silver platter. You got to, it's designed for you to really dig in and rediscover yourself. Amazing. Alejandro, it's a pleasure. Thank you for being, for being a part of this community and for being you know, for this for this podcast uh, and for those listening live thank you for being here thank you for being part of the community as well and for those listening to the podcast afterwards uh, this is the coaching to flourish podcast where we look and hear the stories from participants in the coach training edu programs thank you for being part of this community thank you for listening until next time